Nice to be here. I, uh, I go by TJ because I have a very difficult Haitian name to pronounce. I use my initials TJ, but my real name is Thomas Jefferson. So I use that just <laughs> to make it easy for me. I, I don't look like a Thomas Jefferson. I don't. Maybe one of his kids, but not him. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, we're gonna get along. <laughs> this is more where that came from. <laughs> English is my third language. I speak Haitian Creole because I'm Haitian. I speak French because of a foreign exchange program. <laughs> called slavery. <laughs> Terrible program, I did not recommend it, you know. It's too much to pay for French, it's not worth it. Just try Rosetta Stone instead, that is way cheaper. I'm glad you're laughing. Sometimes people feel bad about that. It's like, this. don't feel bad, it's not a black person thing. That's just the way the world happened, you know? People take over other cultures and they make you speak their languages. It's happened to all of us. Here's what I've realized. If your language and your nationality are the same, you did not suffer too much. <laughs> if your language is different from your nationality, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> you got fucked at some point <laughs> in your history by somebody. I'll prove it to you. The Chinese speak Chinese. The Japanese speak Japanese. Mexicans do not speak Mexican. <laughs> What the fuck happened there? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what happened. It turns out Spain had one of the largest foreign exchange programs <laughs> of all time. They were just giving Spanish to everybody <laughs> like it was a sexually transmitted disease, you know? <laughs> Everyone woke up in South America with a bad case of the Spanish, and I, there is no cure. <laughs> and it's not just Spanish. Here we are, you know, America speaking English. The entire world at this point speaks English because England was the Bill Cosby of colonizers. <laughs> <laughs> they put us all to sleep and sprinkle something in our drinks. <laughs> and we all woke up like, hello! <laughs> How are you? <laughs> what a lovely evening. It is weird being in America now as a, as a black immigrant, because people just look at you and they assume how you must feel about things. It's mm -hmm. strange, you know? Two summers ago, I went to a protest by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not mean to go at all. <laughs> I was biking in Brooklyn, and all of a sudden, I was like, oh shit, I'm in a protest now, fuck. <laughs> it was terrifying, you know? I was surrounded by all these young, hopeful white people. <laughs> I was like, all right, this is probably a protest about my life. So <laughs> I, I think I have to stay. It's not a good look <laughs> to leave the protest about your life. So I stayed and it got weird. A lot of them were coming up to me. They were like, you matter. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I never thought I didn't, but thank you, I guess. You fucking weirdos, get out of my face. White liberals, listen, you have good intentions, but you're very annoying, you know? Just leave me alone. I don't need you to prop me up. I'm not gonna go to a protest in America on purpose. I'm not. I'm from Haiti. I paid a lot of money for a green card to be here. I'm not dying for this country. You guys do that shit. That's, that's your country. Why would I risk dying for America? I survived Haiti. <laughs> Surviving Haiti and dying for America, that would be like you survive cancer and you die of a gluten allergy. And that's how, <laughs> that's how insane that would be. I'm not fucking doing it, you die for your land. <laughs> but it is fun. It feels like, you know, I came to America too late. You know, should have come in the 90s. 
coming to America now, it's sort of like if you get into Kanye West right now. <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, fuck, the stock has plummeted, you know? <laughs> Just wanted music, but he hears Jews now. What do, what do I do with that? <laughs> but the interesting thing about, you know, America from the perspective of an immigrant is that it doesn't matter where you start, you can still end up in a pretty good place. And that's what's interesting for immigrants. And that's the story of my favorite person in American history. I'm going to tell you about him. This guy named George Washington Carver. If you don't know who that is, it's a black man born in the mid 18th century. He was born into slavery, treated horribly, but he's a fighter, this guy. When he became free, he educated himself and became a scientist obsessed with peanuts. Which is a weird thing for a grown man to be into. You know, what are you, a cartoon character? Jesus Christ. But he loved peanuts. He became the LeBron James of peanuts. <laughs> this dude found over 300 uses for peanuts. And I'm pretty sure he created the peanut allergy to take out white children. <laughs> For obvious reasons. <laughs> I've never met a black kid with a peanut allergy before. Could the science be that precise, you know? <laughs> That's the mark of a great scientist. An average scientist will look at peanuts and be like, what if we grind this up and put it on bread? That should be nice. Not George Washington Carver. This man saw peanuts and thought, this is the most subtle weapon of white destruction. This is how <laughs> I'm gonna topple these people. <laughs> All right, I gotta come clean to you guys. I did this joke two months ago and at the end of the show, this black dude came up to me and it was like, hey man, this is a very funny joke, but I, I did not wanna say this out loud. I'm actually allergic to peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Uh, turns out the science is not precise at all. There's, there's tons of black kids out there with peanut allergies. Tons of them. So if you're one of those black kids, just know you're taking one for the team, all right? <laughs> Judge Carver was not targeting you. It's just collateral damage. It happens. So I read a little bit more about his life, and I found out he got castrated as a slave, which is obviously very sad. But I think that was his motivation to get into the peanut game. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I think that's what gave him the strength to do it. I think the day he got castrated, he said the most gangster shit of all time. I think that day he looked at his masters and went, you guys may have taken my balls but one day your children will choke on these nuts and then walk away. Thank you very much, Dotel.